Hello, welcome to another coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I'm gonna take the Mandelbrot set, which is here programmed in processing, and I'm going to convert that code to the Julia set. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about what the Julia set fractal is, and then just write the code for it, play with it, make an animation out of it, do a few other things, and then I'll be finished. So first I wanna say is, I'm gonna assume a little bit of knowledge, uh, which you can pick up and watch the previous video about the Mandelbrot set, uh, if some of the stuff, um, is uh, confusing to you. Okay, I'm gonna keep going here. So first, let's, let, me, let me just though remind you what's going on. So the idea is that there is a canvas, and the canvas has an x-axis and a y-axis. But I'm thinking that canvas, though it exists on the screen with that x-axis and y-axis, I'm using it to visually represent something called the complex plane. What do I mean by the complex plane? Well, a complex number is a number written like a plus bi, where i is an imaginary number or the square root of negative one. There's, you know, think about that. Uh, it's, an, it's imaginary, right? What's the square root of negative one? You're gonna be thinking for a very long time until you just decide like, I can't come up with the answer, so I'll just make up an imaginary number that is the answer called i. So the, all complex numbers have a real component, that's the a, and an imaginary component, that's the b. And so the x-axis represents a, and the y-axis represents b. And so the, in the Mandelbrot set, what happens in the Mandelbrot, we're saying for every complex number C, which equals A plus BI, every complex number on this plane, we want to test the function where Z of some iter an iterative function, so Z of n, Z n plus 1 equals Zn, the previous Z squared, plus that complex number. So if we start the first right, z sub zero would be c, and then z sub one would be c squared plus c, and then z sub two would be c squared plus c squared plus c, right? This is the iterative process that's going to happen over and over again. I'm mentioning all this. Uh, okay, so now, <laughs> one thing that we need to know is how to take a complex number, and I'm doing this again because I think it's worth it, a plus bi and square it. So if we take a plus bi, squared, take a plus bi multiplied by itself, we get a squared plus a bi, right? a times a plus bi times a plus bi times a, which is a bi plus bi squared. So this turns out to be a squared plus a, oh, whoops, sorry, plus two a bi plus b squared times i squared. Well, i is the square root of negative one, so i squared is negative one, so this is minus b squared. And now we have a squared plus b squared, oh, sorry, a squared minus b squared plus two a b i. So this is now another complex number with a real component and an imaginary component. And you can see this, that math is happening in the code all the way down here. So this is what's happening. It's, we're iterating over and over again and looking at the, uh, so AA is, represents A squared, BB represents B squared. So the new complex number is A squared minus B squared plus that, plus C, the real, but plus C, A of C. <laughs> Can you see that A of C? And then the B component is 2AB plus uh, Y. So X and Y are remembering the previous uh, A and B. Okay, so that's what's happening with the Mandelbrot set, and the whole point of the Mandelbrot is testing, okay, is the point going towards infinity, or is the iterative process resulting in infinity, or is it resulting in a bounded number that doesn't tend toward infinity? And my test to see if it's going to infinity is just essentially look at its distance from zero. A squared plus B squared is greater than arbitrarily 16, and typically you just can check a four, two squared is four, but you know, you can kind of play around with this to, um, because what I'm doing is also mapping the number of iterations it takes to get to a certain color. And so there's a variety of ways you can kind of approach this in here. And there's a strict mathematical approach, but I'm, <laughs> I'm all over the place and trying different things. So you can see doing that and then just setting a pixel color based on how many iterations there were. And then we get this particular famous well-known pattern known as the Mandelbrot set. So that's my recap of the Mandelbrot set. You don't have to watch that previous video after all. <laughs> Let's talk about what the Julia set is. So the Julia set is actually something very specific. 
Um, and I'm going to go, I'm going to use uh, this uh, Paul Bork site, which has to do with this particular insane looking function, z to the fourth power. Uh, the Ga oh, sorry, the Julia set is named for a mathematician named Gaston Julia, who was looking at this particular crazy polynomial expression. But I'm going to look at kind of what is more conventionally known or thought of as the, um, the Julia set itself, which is actually a, um, a connected deeply to the Mandelbrot set. So what you can see, Julia set are often thought of as like Mandelbrot dust these patterns that emerge out of these like pieces of the Mandelbrot set in a way. And so there's a key difference in how the Julia set works. The way the Julia set works is instead of C itself being re related to the very pixel that you're iterating, C in the Julia set is actually just a constant. So Z sub zero, the first z is equal to the complex number represented by the pixel. But the thing that you add to it, the c, is actually just a constant. So while z sub 0 changes as you move along, c always remains constant. And I'll show you. In the code, I can actually just change two things in the code in two seconds, and we'll see the Julia set. So let me show you what I mean by that. <clears throat> and somebody please make a version of a rainbow Julia set for me. I'm going to do everything black and white. So let me show you what I mean. So for one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Wikipedia page and I'm going to scroll down. And you can see there are different results that you can get. And let's pick this one. Like I want to get this particular result. So look at this constant. This is a complex number with both a real component and an imaginary component. And it's a constant. So what I want to change in the code is instead of that constant, right, each iterative process I take the, the squared, a squared minus b squared, and 2ab, and add it to the particular complex number that I'm iterating. But instead of that, instead of that specific x and y uh, saved complex number, I want to just use uh, these. So this, the constant. So this would be negative 0.7 something. So I'm going to change this to that. Negative 0.7 something. And this, I'm going to change to negative 0.3. So now, if I run this, there we go. Look, I've got the Julius set fractal with exactly the same code. I didn't really change anything about it. So that's the secret here. The Julius set is really just a little bit of a trick in, in many ways. In terms, if, if all you care about is the visual pattern, um, it's just a trick to use a constant instead of the actual complex number that's associated with that pixel. Now, what I really should do to improve what I'm doing here is make that constant a variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment that out. Uh, I'm going to go backwards, and I'm going to here inside draw at the very top. I'm going to add a CA referring to the A component of the complex constant, and, uh, and I'm going to make a variable called CB. And I'm going to get that for CA, and I'm going to make that for uh, CB. See, that's going to be CA, and that's going to be CB. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and change this to CA and CB. So now you can see, there we go, there is my, uh, this particular Julia set. So now we have a mechanism by which I could kind of just keep going and be like, oh, interesting. Let's grab um, this particular number, which you notice, by the way, this particular pattern only has, has a zero for the real component. So I'm going to go and I'm going to just change this to zero and this to 0 0.8. And I'm going to run that. And you can see, there's that pattern. Matches exactly what we just saw on Wikipedia. I'm doing my, that'll be the thumbnail for this video. Um, so, uh, OK, so this is interesting. We're getting somewhere. Now, let's say I want to animate this. There's two things that I want to do in this video. Number one is I just want to make this animate. And number two, I want to uh, look at how I might use a mouse over the Mandelbrot set itself and see the Julia set associated with each point on the Mandelbrot set itself. Back from an awkward cut, I kind of went off in a misdirection into something that wasn't so important. You can watch the, the archive live version of this for all of the chatter about that. But the only thing I'm going to do is actually uh, right now is just move this up here because technically I want to check if it's going toward infinity. And with the Julia set, I actually only need to check you know, it's good enough just to check if it's greater than four. Um, but I, once I 
once I square those values, I can check here to see if those values have gotten greater than four and then iterate to the next generation of, uh, at the next generation. And you can see here, I've still got the Julia set going. Okay, so there's a lot of things I could do here and I wanna do a couple things. The first thing I wanna do is just make this animate. So one thing I could do is in these constant values, instead of having them, oh, oh, before I get to that, let me show you something. So this is a particular Julia set where only the, um, only the imaginary number, which, which has no real component, the real number is zero, the imaginary number is 0.8, but if I actually try to pick one where there is no imaginary component, one thing you'll notice is that the, um, uh, the Julia set is always perfectly symmetrical if there is no imaginary component. So we could keep trying different like values. I don't know if I'll get something, and you can see here is another perfectly symmetrical um, Julia set. So if, if the imaginary component is always zero, you will get perfect symmetry. But one thing that I want to do is I want to just say, oh, let me map the mouse value, which goes from between zero and width to between like negative one and one, mouse x value. And let me also map the mouse y value, which goes between zero and height, to between negative one and one. And now what I can do is you can see as I move the mouse around, I am seeing all the different Julia sets. Now ultimately, what I wanted to do is put the Mandelbrot set next to this. It's essentially the same thing. So as I move the mouse over the Mandelbrot, you can set, you can see the Julia set next to it. And, and maybe I'll leave that as somebody, as an exercise to somebody. You can see just on Paul Bork's uh, site here, this diagram is what I intended to do. As I move the mouse over the Mandelbrot set, you would then see the Julia set, the corresponding Julia set, the dust, so to speak, next to it. But this is kind of a nice effect here. And you can see something about this range of like negative one to one is kind of a, a nice range to use. And, um, and I can try to get, if I get to zero, where is zero along the y-axis would be here. So these should be all the symmetrical ones, but you can see I'm not exactly at zero. Um, but you can see if I'm at zero, I've got the symmetrical one. So you can see I can, uh, someone can make a nice dancing gif. I should add some music here. I'll, I'll do that. In a, uh, I'm just going to do this in the middle of the video. <laughs> I don't care anymore. Dancing Julia set. Okay. Um, so, um, but what I want to show you, what I think could be interesting to try is instead of having it be mouse interactive, a really quick way that I could have those values in the Julia set adjust automatically is I could use a sine wave. So what if I had an angle uh, and set that equal to zero, and then, uh, let me comment this out, and then I say uh, float CA equals sine of that angle, and float uh, CB, I'm just going to make the imaginary component zero for right now. And I'm going to say, oops, and not A, angle. And then I'm going to have that angle increase, you know, over time by some amount. And you can see, look what's happening now. That it's oscillating between negative one and one. So you almost have this like breathing Julia set. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. We could, this would be good for like meditation. So the other thing I could do is I could oscillate only the imaginary component. I could set the real component to zero. And now you can see this sort of like oscillation happening here. Well, sort of, it almost has this like left and right feel to it. Then what I could do is I could oscillate them both and have this one like kind of be at a different period. I'll just multiply the angle by something. And you can see what's happening. We should have this kind of like infinite set of oscillating uh, Julia fractals. And I almost want, I just want to sort of see, like you can see it's like animating quite quickly. Um, I want to just sort of see like how far I can push this. If I up the resolution a bit, if processing performance wise is still good. Uh, I'm going to go to like 1000 by uh, 800. So you can see performance wise, it's starting to slow down a little bit, but I'm still able to get pretty fast performance out of pixel operations. So I will make a JavaScript version of this, but you'll see that canvas pixel operations in JavaScript without doing some like WebGL magic are gonna be much, uh, much slower. Um, okay, so I think, ah, so let's do one more thing. So let me put this back. One thing that I think would be useful is we need this Julia set to be a rainbow. So I'm gonna leave the exercise of putting a Mandelbrot set and a Julia set next to each other for somebody on the internet to do and share with me or maybe I'll just post the code to that. We'll go with this video and this should now say Julia set. But what I wanna do is change the color mode to HSB. So instead of reading the red, green, and blue values of a color, 
I'm going to uh, make colors based on hue, saturation, and brightness. So what I'm going to do down here is when I make the color, uh, and um, since I have this sort of crazy uh, formula based on the number of iterations, uh, sorry, let me go over here and grab this. I'm just going to put this in a separate variable uh, called H for hue. And then I'm going to make a color hue with a saturation and brightness of 255. That's, um, why does it not like H? Duplicate variable H. I used that for something else. HU for hue. Okay, so let me run this. Ah, oh, there we go. There's my rainbow, Julia said, <laughs> finally. Um, and, you know, I could potentially, I don't know, you know, we could play with these values a little bit too, or the brightness to, actually, we, I don't know why I even consider playing with the saturation. And we can say, here's my lovely rainbow, Julia said, now, <laughs> uh, this, I, this would be a good, this is a good screenshot, but I need to pick <laughs> a good, so let's look, let's go back to Wikipedia. I'm in this video. Let's look, let's look for this one. 0.8, this one looks kind of nice, right? Uh, 0.8.156. So 0.8, 0. 0. 0. 0.156. Ooh, I didn't get that right. Something's negative probably. Oh, negative 0.8. Negative 0.8. There we go. Ooh, the, how lovely. So this will be my <laughs> this will be my thumbnail for this video. <laughs> I should do this. I should do that after the video. But you're watching me make the thumbnail in the video. Whatever. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, that's it. I think for this video. Oh, here's the thing. I would uh, one thing that I'm not doing is the zooming. So this would be an interesting exercise for you guys. The range is defined in this particular code by um, these values, w and h. So for example, if I were to change this to 2, you're going to see I'm quite zoomed in on it. So that is also something I could use to animate. For example, what if I said the absolute value of sine of that angle you know, times 5, uh, this would sort of zoom in and out. So you can see here I am zooming into us. I'm zooming directly into the center, which might, which you can see like kind of zooms into blackness, but you could probably figure out like where's the sort of point you want to zoom. Also, at a certain point, you know, these numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and the degree of accuracy I'm going to get with floating point math won't work so well. But I encourage you to sort of explore the zooming on your own and sort of see how that. Um, and you can see how it's like really slowing down also as it gets uh, computation-wise as it gets closer and closer in. Um, but that's something you can also explore with and play. Uh, and I could even put this back. This will be my final move here that we could sort of see it's zooming as those values are changing as well. So this is the full finished version. Thanks for watching this Julia set tutorial. I hope that you learned something. I hope I didn't get too much wrong. I usually get quite a few things wrong, but I'll hear from the internet with corrections and make them again in a future video. Thanks very much, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>